So I think the theme really concerning institutional development is understanding the development of the interplay between the informal power structures in Gothenburg and the formal power structures in Gothenburg. And how that balance changes over time, just like the shoreline changes. What I'm going to suggest then is an even broader framing of this development. When I take generic principles that are applicable to other parts of the world and see how they play out in Gothenburg. And I then are going to say that there are two sort of uh, trends that are useful to and analyze this in terms. And the one is sort of this very long term, I know, from the sort of old functional separation towards the folks of mixed <laughs> use. And you saw it on the image before. We see it physically in the map. Of course, these ideas also ideologically are very, very popular. Richard Florida was in Gothenburg in 2004, I believe, or maybe 2006. And uh, there were apparently 900 people listening. So this idea, which is very much realized in Lindholm about the virtues of mixed use in triple helix is, is, is coming in. But the general trend, I'm arguing, is one from understanding how a relatively hierarchical economy needs to be managed, which essentially, in the early days, involved chopping down trees in the northern part of Sweden, either burning them in a moss or in another part of northern Sweden, or putting on the train and shipping that from Gothenburg port. That gave the logic of the planning system. But gradually, and this really takes uh, new speed in the, in the early 2000s, is the emergence of the much more network knowledge economy, which is what the river city is there to respond to in the first place. And what it means is that it becomes much more important uh, to integrate different value producing processes in the same space. That's what it means. You can't chop down trees there and burn them there and create value. You need to somehow connect Geely with Chalmers with Volvo. And this is what this environment seeks to do. So that becomes much, much more important. And that, of course, means a much greater need to coordinate. That's a natural consequence of this. And that becomes much more important to coordinate different kinds of development process. Unfortunately, at the same time, the other development, from a stable corporatist political model to political fragmentation, means that the old tools for coordination are becoming less effective. So I'm arguing that this is a, there's a central dilemma through which we should read the challenges we're facing. Long-term trends mean that coordination is more important. Long-term trends mean that the old ways of doing it doesn't exist anymore. The River City Vision is just the version in Gothenburg of trying to address this. But everyone is struggling with it. The good news is that you can make the case that we started quite early. Because there is something in this story, which if you tell it this way, that involves a rather remarkable risk willingness to go across the river. That was not an easy decision. And don't, don't underestimate that. Strategically then, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, can we do it? Can the city? build the administrative capacity to operate in a more complex environment with less tools to organize that complex environment? Or can we not? If we cannot, we'll end up in a situation where we involve our public administration in situations that are too complex for us to manage them, and we would destroy more value than we would create. Then we should take a step back. But if we can, we can maybe really help show a new path forward for how you employ public power in the new fragmented world. And if we, through the River City project, can show that, that there is a way, even in this degree of complexity and this degree of political fragmentation, that it's still possible to defend the kind of democratic values that are the heart of the River City vision, then we have done not something small, but something quite important. 